It is a really important topic. What do you think this means for um, the industry? And that person can help you see the value that you add. Learning from them is, is really powerful. Once you start on that journey, then you'll, you'll find that you get more and more motivated. You'll be surprised what you might get from those types of conversations. This is Thinking Forwards by WebGains, a podcast series to encourage progress in the affiliate channel. Join our team and our guests as we delve into and dissect some really important topics. It's time to think forwards. On with the podcast. Hi, everyone. Um, this one is a little bit uh, a peculiar moment for me because um, I think a year and a half ago, Amy and I at our usual weekly catch up were talking about how cool it would be to experiment with some sort of a conversation in a studio and perhaps record some of the uh, topics which we discuss day to day because very often somehow we go out of day to day and talk about, I don't know, existential questions, right? So this one, maybe, maybe is going to be an example of that. I'm uh, extremely excited to say hi to Amy and to Debs. Amy is our uh, CTO at WebGains and uh, Deborah Southgate is a mentor, fantastic mentor, I should say, um, coach and uh, personal, personal change expert. This is a really great definition, I think. And we started to uh, work with Debs pretty recently. And I think um, moving towards uh, an in-house coach relationships. So this particular conversation, if we get it right, we want to talk about learning on the fly, learning on the go. Um, and the reason why we want to talk about it is because our industry is a strange one in the sense that there is no long standing institution behind it. It's a very young vertical. Um, if you think about affiliate channel, it's probably a young adult at best in terms of the mindset. <laughs> and I wonder, well, I guess, Amy, I, I would like to direct this question to you. What do you think this means for um, the industry and, and the speed of it and um, the train of thoughts within it? It is a really important topic. Um, like you say, the industry doesn't have um, university degrees that are set up around it and so a lot of people come into the industry quite fresh they might not be familiar with the the models the um, ins and outs of affiliate marketing so a lot is actually taught on the job um, a lot is actually based on learning from others and, and growing up in the industry and, and most people have uh, that type of um, experience coming in and I think I think what this means is it, it creates the opportunity for um, quite a fast paced in industry and it also gives way to creativity. It's not super rigid. And I would say for anyone coming into the industry, it's about taking those learning opportunities from everyone around you. Um, of course, there are various like training guides and online um, modules you can do on affiliate marketing, but I think it, the the value that you can get from learning on the job and being open minded to the people that you're working around and learning from them is is really powerful to your journey in in the industry. Absolutely, yes. It's it's like we are trying to in the company we are trying to document the trail of experiences we are having, but at the same time, it very often feels that the most productive learning is that learning in depth day-to-day -day and discovering the truths on the go. Yeah. And so Dubs, I, I wonder, you have the wealth of experience with working with various companies and various verticals um, and organizations of a completely different DNA. Do you think the age of industry matters? And does it shape a particular uh, way of uh, running companies, a um, particular way of leading the teams? So, yes, in, in short, I think that it does, um, 
it does matter and it does make a difference. I think when you see these industries where they're very young coming through, so I've worked a lot with the, the digital industry and that is becoming more mature now, but certainly in the early 2000s working in that industry, you know, the, the not just the team you were working with, but also the, you know, the, the boss of the company that you were working for <laughs> was, was probably about the same age as well you know the the, the directors the owners were, were were very young and 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 actually everything in how it worked was very immature um it, it was if i can say that in the kindest possible way um but it was also very fast evolving it was very it was a very exciting place to be and i think that can make it very good for attracting good talent however the organisations also need to mature as they get older because ways of working need to be put in place and processes um, and, um, you know, structure needs to come and, and often there can be uh, cultural... There's a, there's a cultural desire to not have too much of that sometimes in, in these younger companies, but actually it is needed in order to mature and scale and, and grow organisations, and that can feel difficult to implement sometimes as well. That's a really good point, and I think we, we definitely need to return to this a little bit more. I wanted to, to touch a little bit more upon, uh, on, on that bit of getting into the leadership position young and how does it feel and what it means and um, how it affects your uh, decision making process. Amy, do you want to? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a big, it, it is a big question. And, and my journey, I think, I think for a long time, I didn't actually really take stock and ad acknowledge where I'd got to in my career at quite a young age. Um, you know, I was in my 20s, I was in board meetings and um, working with CEO, managing director of the, the company that I was based in. And I think you absorb a lot of pressure without even realizing when you're going into those situations. And I think um, for me personally, I was just taking every opportunity I could. I was just very much um, trying to do what I could to, um, show that I deserved a seat uh, in that place. And I think, you know, that can be incredibly exhausting. I think, you know, you can almost overdo it sometimes when you're in that position of you've been given some uh, authority or opportunity and, and that um, almost imposter syn syndrome of not thinking that you're you're worthy of being there. So you work so hard to, to demonstrate that. And I think that's you know, I, I think that's a, a theme that we hear quite a lot of, um, especially with female leaders coming up the ranks, is how do you navigate imposter syndrome? How do you um, build your confidence that actually you know what you're doing, you deserve to be there, and um, and you've got the opportunity to kind of inspire others to do the, to do the same? This imposter syndrome thing, my experience with it is that it comes at any point of your career as well. It's not like you you dealt with it once and it never comes back. So uh, regardless of the level or the scope of uh, the responsibilities, you are still facing the battle of um, uh, with the imposter syndrome. So that's mm, to yeah. you. How how do we manage it? How, how can we successfully win over imposter syndrome over and over again? So yeah, imposter syndrome is something I come across a lot in in my line of work. Um, I think I think there is an element of it being a natural course of events when you are doing well and succeeding, as you've explained, Amy, particularly at a young age, and and each time you grow and you put yourself into a new position, a new environment, it, it obviously can feel strange the first time you do something or, or you're in a new role you're not used to it, you are a stranger to it, and you are, y you know, you have to learn your way. So it can feel as if you're trying to, to be something that you don't feel comfortable yet. And so hence the imposter syndrome can set in. I think at, at a more serious level, it can be where there's real deep, deeply held self-doubt or, or limiting self-beliefs. And that that is where often I find that I need to 
work with individuals one-on-one -on -one to overcome that. But I think there is some things that, that you can do if, if you're an individual and, and you're feeling in that place, you can, you can stop and just uh, ground yourself for a moment. You can, you can try and um, get out of the sort of emotional based feelings that we have, which is often the, the kind of fear based um, approach and try to look at your situation rationally. So what evidence do you have that you are an imposter versus what evidence do you have that actually you're capable in this role? Um, and also looking for the small wins. So, so make, making sure that you're taking stock and, and acknowledging for yourself when you do well at, at things however small and building up that roster of understanding of, of evidence that that you are actually capable of doing this and and, and looking for people who you trust um, and admire and asking for their feedback so you're kind of building up mm. a library of of both knowing you've got your own quick wins and this external evidence to support you in in kind of really making sure that that belief starts to embed itself yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. I did. Okay, so I, I see a couple of routes here how to um, continue this uh, this conversation. We hope you're enjoying the show. If any of what was said in Thinking Forwards has resonated with you, or if you're looking to unlock more revenue in the affiliate channel, and let's face it, who isn't? Or even if you'd like to be a guest on a future episode, we'd love to talk. Head to our website, www.webgains.com, or email our team at hello at webgains.com, and we'll continue the conversation. Thanks again for listening. Enjoy the second half of the pod. There is this uh, big topic around mentors, and I would love to hear a little bit of your personal stories. What's your attitude and what, like, what's your approach when it comes to sourcing for mentors? Do you believe in mentors? Does it work? You think? I guess I've never had a long-term, uh, a longer-term formal mentor relationship, and I think, I think that actually showcases that the idea of mentoring and that relationship that you can have with somebody can come in very different forms. So it actually might be um, somebody that you trust that you work with and you soundboard and you and they help you in a certain way working through situations and and that can be to some degree some level of of mentoring it's having that somebody to help ground like you like you say somebody there who can help um encourage you to take those moments where you stop and recognize what you've done you know those moments of success and to have a bit of fun like it's when you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself it's really easy to lose the the joy out of uh, out of these moments and I think that's a really kind of nice way of looking at it when you're going into maybe a situation where you feel um, like it's a new experience like you were saying Debs and um, the the pressure that we can put ourselves under in those situations actually just getting some perspective and taking it for what it is and having a bit of fun with it can actually help shift your your perception into it being much more positive um and i think coming back to the the mentoring i i think it i think it's incredibly valuable to have somebody there c that can help navigate you through that exact um situation that i've uh, i've explained somebody that can also help you recognize what goals you want you know what you are what's actually important for you as a person not what your manager is saying or the company that you work for is saying like what is actually important for you what makes you tick what you know what do you want to actually be be striving for and i think that's that's incredibly important because if you take ownership over that and you really understand that then some of these other barriers that we kind of put up for ourselves actually disappear because we're going after something that is more meaningful such a good good uh, bit here as well about the fact that it doesn't actually need to be long-term commitment, uh, lifelong mentor, men mentee relationships. It can be very, very contextual. There is something you need from, um, you need a second opinion or you need a, um, an objective view and that can be mentorship as well. But it can well. be much more formal mm. as well. I think mm. that's the whole thing. Like it depends it depends what's going to work for you as an individual yeah. like this is such a personal 
topic that we're discussing, personal growth, personal development. So I think you need to really um, reflect on on who you are, who, what's gonna what's gonna work for you. Yeah, mm. absolutely. For me personally, I think I can I can certainly. There's a couple of people come to mind for me that have been really influential on my my career my progress my own growth and development over the years a, a couple of instances and 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 not dissimilar to how you said amy quite short-lived um and sometimes informal as well but but really uh a strong influence on my own development and and for me having those people whether it's in a formal capacity or somebody that i've self-identified or or perhaps has you know presented that opportunity um the the benefit that you can take from having that person somebody that you trust that you can go to with a problem um, to ask for advice to bounce off around a particular subject whether that's directly the work that you're doing or more how you're kind of managing your own emotions and your own self and capability around it you know you can get that benefit as well so for me, it's been really, really important part of my career development. Yeah, so it's perhaps why I'm so passionate about now doing that, uh, you know, to help other people with it. Yeah. yeah, I would completely agree. I think it's also, it's the it's this bit of, because we are dealing with so many uncertainties and very often there is no blueprint to decisions and to the best, the correct ways. So it's a lot about experimenting and testing and so sometimes it gets pretty overwhelming and it's really good to have that person who can kind of normalize that experience for you saying actually that's fine no one really knows what they're doing they are just testing and testing and testing and reiterating so yeah, yeah because i think failure is also part of or getting things wrong is part yeah. of our development journey right and often we learn just as much if not more from the times when we get things wrong as we do when we when we do it right as well and i think if you have somebody to go to when you're not feeling so strong about maybe your own performance even that person can help you see the value that you add what you brought to a situation and how good you are and sometimes in your own moment of self-doubt they c they can pick you back up again and i think for all of us and at every level of an organization we need people to to do that because that's what makes people feel uh, engaged to feel to know that they're important that they add value in our organizations um, and ultimately to want to become those people who will then pass that on to others as well to to grow the organization and where do you think is this this balance of uh, we take it quite seriously uh, at web gains about learning and in part about organized learning as well and so there is this very nuanced um, balance of offering those opportunities to learn but also not dragging people into the bright new future if they are perhaps not at the stage where they want to um, study something or they are perhaps just not curious enough to explore it where is where do you think this sits where how can we well i guess the question is how can we encourage um self driven approach in organizations and and in the industry and how much of this needs to be actually structured and matured and much more um documented i think it's a, it's it's a great question and i i, I don't think there's one answer for it in as much as I think you know people learn in different ways, um, and so that's that's the first thing. I think it's important to have uh, structured learning on the basics of what you're doing as a company and expectations within a role. Um, so, like the very practical things that you need to know in order to be successful at your your job. I think it's incredibly important to have structured learning for that, but also the opportunity to shadow people. Um, and digest that information in different forms because I think people learn at their own pace and you need to give space to that. Uh, but I also think it's important that learning sits within a, a culture where people can see how it adds value and there is that curiosity there and it, it's enjoyable. So, you know, how, what, what is the learning material? Is it just 
dry and you're dra- like you say alone you're dragging people through it or are you trying to bring meaning and you know bring practical examples and allow people to actually um demonstrate their learning so i think it's about yes you do need uh, organized learning but there's lots of ways that you can make it in- engaging for people um if it's softer skills then i also think that that you know that bring that becomes slightly more person personal to the individual and so so it is then important to really understand kind of how that per- where that person is on on their journey and um and how you can support them as a mentor or um as a line manager yeah i would i would um just thinking about where it needs to be structured versus where it, it's self-driven um i think my take is it depends on where the where the change has been driven from so if it's my personal desire to to grow to move on in my career um to learn about a subject i don't know much about then i think enabling or giving them opportunities to the individuals so that they can direct their own um development is is a great way to do it where organizations or teams need to evolve and change it does need more driving um it needs more force uh, because often people can be very reluctant to change and they need to be helped through that you know there is a cycle to change where you know even at a level initially of of denial um oh they'll never do that (laughs) um through to oh i don't want to be part of it and then kind of acceptance and, and 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 then moving forwards and actually going oh this change has been really good for me and so uh sometimes you have to really um take people on that journey depending on where you are so if it's a team or an organizational level of change and i know in your industry there's a lot of change happens constantly because the technology and the behavior is evolving um then then you do need to um have a culture that that will bring people on that journey with you um however that personal development i think you can create a space for more self-driven development great thank you yeah that's that's uh, really interesting way to to look at it the this foundational bit which almost the default like academic uh view of these are the 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 bits which you definitely need to know and then there is cultural layer which needs to be enabled by the company um and almost like create a space for learning and then there is um free flow if you want to do more you this needs to be coming from you is just that the com- company can of course support you with with your next moves I'd okay so i mean yep. i just like to add that i think it's important for for people to also be aware that they can learn in a- any situation and i think that's been um something that's been personally really valuable to me that you know if i speak to somebody from a different department or level to me i can always get something from those conversations and i'm very aware mm. of it and i think it it's trying to create this open mindedness to how we learn and and what those learning opportunities can be it doesn't always need to be super structured and really formal learning like you can learn in so many opportunities so i think yeah i yeah. think it's observing yeah, i think observing, is, is yeah. very it's a very strong one it's it's something and it you know it obviously comes into the discussion about um are we remote working or hybrid working or in the office that you know you miss out on those opportunities to to really observe behavior certainly um if you, if you don't have that i know that's probably a whole other topic we could get <laughs> that's into that's for to <laughs> um but but yeah observing is is you know that's how we learn from you know that's how babies learn <laughs> that's how children learn is by observing so we, you know that that's how fundamentally as humans absolutely mm. right okay so um this was pretty cool <laughs> i had a lot of fun thank you so much for being here to wrap it up um you both are extremely successful very passionate very driven and very well versed women i would like you to maybe give an advice to someone uh watching it thinking mm, i would like to achieve a little bit more uh, my trajectory is maybe stagnating 
how can I break through? How can I push uh, myself onto this next level, next step? Um, I would say stay curious and look at the people that are in your life that are surrounding you. And if you are inspired by what they're doing or you think, um, wow, I'd really like to get to where they've got to, you know, reach out to them, ask some questions. Um, you know, I think that's in incredibly important to to not shy away from, from those conversations. And I think you'd, you'll be surprised what you might get from those types of conversations. Great, thank you, Amy. I love that, yeah. I think, um, you know, my advice would be take the first step, take the smallest step even, because once you once you start on that journey, then you'll, you'll find that you get more and more motivated and even just the quick wins and the small steps will give you, start to give you that confidence that you can do this, that you can learn more, that you can improve, you can be better, you can grow. And so take the smallest step that you can even to get yourself started. This was Thinking Forwards by WebGains. Thank you for joining us. If you do like what you hear, come and join us at webgains.com or get in touch via LinkedIn.